So I've noticed over the past couple years of doing this channel that there is a hunger out there for interview questions. And a few weeks ago, as part of my whole being a freelance developer thing, I did a live interview for one of the big freelancing platforms. As part of this interview, I had 15 minutes to build features in a React app real time. And I thought it was a really interesting exercise and actually ended up being pretty fun. So with that in mind, I wanted to make a video to take you through something like a real life whiteboarding problem and how I solved it. If you're interested in the code, I've got it for free on Gumroad. So visit the link below. And if you just put your email in, I'll send you a zip file with both the problem and my solution. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, hey everyone, we are back. Uh, as I mentioned in the intro, this is a real React coding challenge uh, that I got in an interview process. So I wanted to go ahead and show you how I would solve it um, in real life when I did it. I think I only had 15 minutes, but I couldn't quite remember. So I'm gonna go with 10. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the clock and then show you what we're working with. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so basically what we've got here is a React app, it's already running. And uh, basically I'm just gonna get out of package lock. So we are only gonna be in these two files, which are this login form, and some utils. So basically this is our task. Uh, we have an incomplete login form. So we see our guidelines here. We're not allowed to add any HTML into this component or use refs. And so we have a list of tasks here. So basically uh, what we're working with is this email password login. So when you hit login, it should trigger the login action. The button should be disabled if the email's blank or if the password's under six letters or if the action is being performed, so the login. And then we wanna show an error message and show an alert if the login succeeds. So uh, we need to look at the login function as well to figure out how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. I've already brought in use state from React. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that for um, handling the email and password. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we wanna do is have basically password uh, and then set password and we're going to use an empty string for that. Essentially, we've got password, we also want email. Maybe it would have made sense to start with email. Um, so we're gonna do that, and then we're going to set email. So that's all well and good. We also want uh, those values to be on these inputs. So these are gonna be controlled inputs. So that's all well and good. Um, that will allow us to grab these values, set these values, and all that kind of thing. Uh, we'll start with password here. And then we also want to do the same with email. Um, sorry if you can hear my fan. I think uh, this is uh, taking up a little bit more RAM than I expected to record the screen. Um, so we've got that. That's all well and good. Um, and then we've also, uh, what we want to do is we want these to update. So what we're basically saying is, at first, I just want to capture these values. Uh, so in order to pass these values of email and password to this login function, I first need for them to be set. Um, so what I'm doing here is just um, setting up a basic structure for setting the values and getting the values. Um, so now that we have that here with use state, which if you're not familiar, takes the place of uh, kind of set state from class components. Uh, basically what I wanna do here is I want to have an on change uh, and I want the uh, event to be passed and then I want uh, to set email to event.target.value. Um, so whatever is being typed is what's going to be set. And then I also wanna do the same here uh, for password. So instead of set email, we'll set password. So that's all well and good. And so in theory, these should be being set now. So what we wanna do after that is I think work on the login function. So what I'm gonna do is write a function called handle login. It's gonna be an async function because we know in real life that would usually require a call to a server. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and write that. And basically what we want to do, because we know this is going to be an async call, and I can tell you that by um, this login action, looking at this, uh, it's basically kind of faking asynchrony with this promise here. So in real life, like I said, you'd call to a server, but here we're just trying to replicate that functionality. So we can see we, we have a randomly generated delay. We can see that it wants email and password, but it wants them in an object. So that's interesting. Uh, and then we have this promise, uh, we're checking password. So we the correct password is one, two, three. 
we want email to exist. And if those both aren't true, then we're going to get an error. So when we investigate, we can see that. I'm skipping ahead a little bit because that's kind of the last um, step here. It says investigate the login function to find out how to log in. But since I've done this before, I know a little bit. This might not be the exact same order you would do it if you were in an interview. So we got about five minutes left, so I need to hurry. Um, but I just wanted to call that out. So what we're gonna do here is um, have a try catch. If you're not familiar, this is just a way of um, handling kind of uh, failing promises and that kind of thing. Uh, we know that we're going to need uh, an error as well. Um, so basically I'm going to say error, set error, and then that can be yeah empty string. And then we know from reading the instructions, um, while the action is being performed, we need a way to track that. So I'm going to do basically the same thing, um, but with a loading variable. So I'm going to say loading and then set loading. Uh, and of course, to start, it'll be false. Okay, so now that we have everything we need, we can come here. We want this handle login to fire uh, when we click this button. So I'm just going to say on click. Um, handle login and then in theory that should work you notice I'm not checking anything yet um, so that's probably something you'd be doing along the way is just making sure everything fires as you expect so um, we'll just pull up the console here make sure we're not uh, doing anything too crazy so um, you know uh, whatever you know uh, my email uh, seems fine right we're not getting errors in the console yet so um, I'll go ahead and clear that actually and we'll leave this here for later on. Um, so I'm gonna come back, let's look at how we're doing on time. Three minutes, so gotta hurry. Okay, so we know here that basically what we wanna do is to use this login and we want to pass as an object. So we're going to await login because we know that this is an asynchronous call, right? So, uh, and we wanna pass, uh, let's see, uh, email and password. So we're gonna pass it in exactly the way that it wants in an object. Um, and then if we catch uh, the error um, down here, what we want to do is set error um, to whatever the error message is. And then we can come back up here uh, that we want to show the error message. If it fails, uh, it should be cleared every time the user reattempts to log in. So what I'm going to do is at the top, just set error to null every time we click that button. There's probably other ways to do this, but I think that's a pretty solid way of doing it. And then it says that we also want to um, basically show this error message. I'm trying to see where that is. Um, show an error message if the login fails. And so if we scroll down here, we can see this is where the error message should go, um, only if there are login errors, right? So basically we know that we have this variable error, so I'm just gonna put it right there. Uh, that's from right here. And then we also know, uh, basically we want uh, to do a check for if email is blank or if passwords under six letters or if it's loading, right? So basically uh, we can say, you know, disable button is either, e you know, there's no email or password, the, the password length, right, is less than six or if the loading is true. Uh, so basically what we'll want to do is we'll want to uh, set loading to true at the beginning and then uh, regardless we want to set loading to false here uh, and if that succeeds we still want to set it to false if the login succeeds and then we also know that we have to set an alert um, if the login succeeds so basically we can say um, alert login successful um, so that's all well and good. We have about a minute left. Um, so I think that's everything we need to do. So let's read back through this again. We should log in, pass the data to it, uh, disable the button if it's blank or if password is under six letters, um, or if it's loading, uh, show an error message if it fails, uh, and clear it every time the user attempts to log in. So we're doing that, setting error to null, and then alert if it succeeds and figure out how to log in successfully. So if we go back to the code over here, then we should be able to see, um, I would expect this to be, um, oh, we haven't used, we haven't set disable button anywhere. So disabled uh, will be true uh, if disabled button is true, which it should be. So we can see now it's grayed out. Um, so basically, uh, peter at peter.com, 
but we also need a password that's over six in length. So one, two, three, four, five on six. Um, so let me make sure it's less than six, under six. So that seems to be working. And then we also know based on this that we want password to be password one, two, three. So I'm going to say clear password one, two, three, and then login. And then login is successful. You can see there was a delay. So it's kind of like fake asynchrony. And then let's do an error. So password one, two, login. Oh, quick error there. Um, so let's see what is going on here. Um, you can see our timer's up. So I'm going to go ahead and stop things. I think we're pretty close. That was pretty good. And I'm pretty sure I had uh, 15 minutes in real life. But let's look at this, peter.com, password12, login. The same thing happened again. So let's see what's actually going on here. Um, so if you meant to render a collection of children, use an array, catch error, set error. Um, so I think what we need to do uh, is, I think what's happening, we need to figure out what the error actually looks like, because I think it, it might be error.message. But let's go ahead and console log this error. And uh, we'll say, you know, peter, peter.com, my password. And the error actually looks like error dot. So I think what we need is um, actually error dot message. Um, so errors come back when you throw the native error here as an object. Um, so we actually need error dot message. So let's see if that uh, actually helps things. And we'll say my pass. And there it is, nice and red. Okay, so slight error on my part, but we did it in about 10 minutes. Uh, I've got 1215 here on the loom recording. So anyway, I hope this is helpful. I think this is a pretty good exercise. Honestly, wish I'd come up with it. I think it's a great little interview thing to see how someone works under pressure and someone's problem solving skills and also get a sense for what their uh, sense of react is. Um, I had to go pretty fast. I'm pretty sure when I did this the first time it was 15 minutes, but I like a little challenge. And yeah, like I said in the intro, you can find both the starter code and my solution uh, at the link below. So uh, that will take you to a Gumroad page where all you have to do is just tell us where to send it to you and you'll get a nice zip of both of those repos. So again, hope you find this helpful and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.